Hello, 12th grade, and welcome to the Irish Literary Renaissance. I'm Liam Healy, and I'm going to be talking about J.M. Singe and his impact on the Irish Literary Renaissance. So J.M. Singe, as you can see on the left, his picture, was born in 1871 and died in 1909. He was an Irish playwright and a key figure in the Irish literary revival and was one of the co-founders of the Abbey Theatre. He is best known for his play, The Playboy of the Western World, written in 1907, because it caused riots in Dublin during its premiere at the Abbey Theatre and for weeks following, so police had to be involved in just a play. Wow, that's crazy. He's also the author of Riders to the Sea, written in 1904, and Deirdre of the Sorrows, written in 1909, and many other famous Irish plays. So, to begin... If you want to know J.M. Singe, you got to know about the Aran Islands. So, let's begin. W.B. Yeats, as I'm sure many of you know, and J.M. Singe were pretty good friends. So, they met in Paris one time. And before, before all of this, Singe was interested in studying French literature, actually. However, Yeats told him to go to the Aran Islands and live there as if you were one of the people themselves. Express a life that has never found expression, as quoted in Skelton's book. Singe moved to the Aran Islands to study a part of Ireland that even to their fellow Irishmen was overlooked. It was a place tainted with myth and the people lived in extreme poverty. It was a setting for his plays The Riders to the Sea and Shadow of the Glen. So as you can see on the left there, it is not a very nice place to live. There are a small set of rocky islands um, off the west coast of Ireland. So realism. J.M. Singe was a realist. He portrays in his plays rural landscapes and the rural humble and noble people that inhabit them. That seems romantic, but in reality, he was a realist whose work was tinged with myth because the people of the Aran Islands lived with myth in their daily lives. One example of the myth in their daily lives, I believe in, um, in The Riders to the Sea, there's one example where a gray horse appears to the character in the play. And a gray horse to the people of the Aran Islands means that you will die soon. Perhaps in the next following days or weeks. So that is just one example of a myth they have about gray horses. He mixed comedy, tragedy, and satire, forming a sense of realism that bordered on magical. The poverty of the Aran Islands is what makes his place so gloomy and real. The realism of those islands, aka people drowning, fighting, murdering each other, are all things he saw on the islands and brings to his plays. Which, as one would expect would cause lots of controversy, especially at that time, and especially at a time when Irish plays were kind of becoming a new thing. So Singe was a risk taker and embraced criticism. Every single one of his most famous works were criticized. For example, Riders to the Sea is a very gloomy play about death on the islands. Every single one of Maori, Maori is the mother of the family in the play, every single one of her sons have drowned, like most of the boys of the Aran Islands do. This play is very realistic about life and death on the islands. The Playboy, the Playboy of the Western World as well, which as you know was protested against at the Abbey Theatre for two weeks because of its controversial plot. It's about an attempted murderer who was on the run and found himself in a local peasant Irish village. And he was actually considered by them the playboy of the Western world because of his bravery for killing someone and his confidence and swagger he had. And he was sort of a bad boy that everyone loved. So as you know, those are very realistic plays. Um, he doesn't... He doesn't uh, he doesn't leave anything to the imagination. He's very upfront. His plays represent the people he por he's portraying. He portrays local Irish peasantry, the people that are in islands, very harsh lives, people drowning, people dying, crime, all of that. 
he makes it very apparent in his plays, which is a very big shock to his upper middle class, middle class um, audience in Dublin who were at the Abbey Theatre, which is why, for example, the Playboy of the Western world was protested against for so long, because it was so radical, yet so real. As well, another thing about J.M. Singe that's important is that he had a very realistic approach to life, and his values were not clear and defined in his plays. There was no good guy versus bad guy with good ending in the win, with good uh, winning in the end. Sorry, his values were not clear and defined. You would really have to uh, seek it out and think about the play and make your own interpretation. He really had a, um, he didn't have a linear way of explaining his stories and the values, but his plays were very dynamic and you had to wrap your head around them. So his impact on the whole Irish literary renaissance, well, let's see, his controversial plays based off of the strange people, the Aran Islands and typical Irish peasantry greatly evolved the themes of the Irish literary revival. His plays brought attention to the overlooked Irish peasantry, and the realism of his plays were accurate to the realism of the people he was portraying. His plays brought these ideas and themes into the hearts of his audience. So what he did was he brought in by, by, so look, by focusing and writing plays on these, um, on local Irish peasantry and the overlooked people of the Iron Islands, who even the Irish government didn't care about. He broadened the scope of who and what the Irish literary revival was representing. Up until then, the Irish literary revival was great, but it still hadn't talked about the Irish peasants living in Ireland and the people of the Iron Islands, who were still a part of Ireland, but never looked at. So J.M. Singe really broadened the scope of what this literary revival was doing and who it was representing. So last but not least, we can look at the Abbey Theatre, which was a great trademark of Singe's, because Singe was actually a co-founder of the Abbey Theatre, along with his good friends, W.B. Yeats and Lady Gregory, who, who founded and originally had the idea for the Abbey Theatre, as uh, Lady Gregory would, would call it, our Irish theatre, or W.B. Yeats wrote about having an Irish national theatre. So J.M. Singe was right there with them in establishing this. His plays were popular worldwide and through them brought attention to Ireland and its people, and more specifically, the people he was portraying, the peasants, the poor, the people who didn't have expression. Singe's plays contributed to the Celtic twilight and in reviving our Irish art and pride. And many common people in Dublin and outside Dublin, and even outside Ireland, traveled to watch Singe's plays at the newly formed Abbey Theatre. So whether you think his plays were good or not, uh, you can certainly say that they bring a lot of attention to them as people were literally protesting. Like who here ever remembers someone protesting a play, because I don't, but they did it in 1904 for this, for the Playboy of the Western World. So yeah, here are my works cited. Thank you for listening. And I want to show you my, my activity for you guys. It is to listen to one of these classic Irish songs and write down in a paragraph how the lyrics and theme of the song relate with the ideas of the Irish literary renaissance. If you can't click on the links, just type in on Google The Rising of the Moon by the Cassidys or The Sea Around Us by the Dubliners. These are very classic and ancient songs that are uh, very Irish nationalistic songs. The bands are relatively new, but the lyrics and the theme and sound of the song is still the same as it always has been. All right. Thank you, guys.